<laughs> We're just reading the newspaper. Don't mind us. We're reading about all the late, late breaking news yeah. in the world today. Let's see. Mine, mine talks about how, how to social distance. What is your mine's the front page about in this industrial day. Oh, industrial pizza. That's a good place. Yeah, I think you have the Richardson newspaper. I wonder if you guys do you all have newspapers at your house. We don't see these very often. Usually, uh, your moms and dads, huh? Once a month. Well, your moms and dads probably get their news from the internet, is what I'm guessing. But when I was a kid, I remember every morning my parents would go grab the newspaper from their front yard and they would read the newspaper while we had breakfast every morning. Now, daddy usually reads the newspaper on the internet, doesn't he? When he's looking at the newspaper. But back in the day, a long, long time ago, before we had other ways of getting communication, the newspaper was how the news got around. And so you would have these kids, like Camden or any of you guys, were called newsies. And they would stand out on the corner and they would sell the newspapers. And so they'd be holding the newspapers up and they'd say, you know, late breaking news. Late breaking news, read all about it. They'd be yelling some of the headlines to get people to come and to buy the newspapers and to hear all about the news that was going on at that time. So we are gonna read today about news, about things happening. So last week, we, um, we talked about after Jesus rose from the dead, he went to visit the disciples. And if you remember, Thomas was not so sure. He wasn't there when Jesus first visited and he wasn't so sure he believed that Jesus had come back. So then Jesus came back to see Thomas, and he helped Thomas to deal with his questions. And he said, Thomas, go ahead, touch my hands. Go ahead, touch my side. I'm here. Um, and so now, after that, we are going to read about what happens next um, during the, the rest of the time that Jesus is with his disciples. I'm going to read it from my favorite. You know, this is my favorite Jesus Storybook Bible. This one is called Going Home. Jesus' friends were afraid, so they were hiding in an upstairs room with the door bolted shut. Remember last week we talked about how scared they were, so they locked the door and stayed inside? But that didn't stop Jesus. He just walked straight through the wall. It's a ghost! Thomas screamed and hid under the table. But it wasn't a ghost. I'm hungry, Jesus said. What's for lunch? Peter gave him a fish. They all hung back and watched him eat it. This can't be, they were telling themselves. It's impossible, it's not happening. But it was happening right in front of them. Delicious, Jesus wiped his mouth with the back of his hand and grinned. Can a ghost do that? He winked and they all laughed. I'm really here, Jesus said, and he really was. Peter's heart leapt with joy and he fell into Jesus's arms, hugging and kissing him. The others followed. They felt their hearts would burst from happiness. The friends ate together and chatted happily, and every now and then they'd just gaze at Jesus and have to touch him to be sure they weren't dreaming. Jesus had a real body, but this body was better. It had come through death and it couldn't get sick or be killed again. This body would live forever. Jesus had come back with a brand new body. Not only were sad things coming untrue, the friends realized that they were becoming new again. Was God going to make everything new? Jesus said, I am the savior and the rescuer of the world. And they knew because he couldn't stay dead, because Jesus had come alive again, that somehow everything would be all right. A few day late, days later, as they walked together, Jesus told his friends, it's time for me to go home to my father. They all looked worried. And then they remembered what Jesus had told them before he died. There's a place for you. I'll get it ready, Jesus had said. You know the way. Thomas had panicked. I don't know the way to get there. Yes, you do, Jesus had said. I am the way and the truth and the life. When at last they reached the top of the highest hill near, near Jerusalem, Jesus turned to them and said, go everywhere and tell everyone the happy news. Tell them I love them so much that I died for them. It's the truth that overcomes the terrible lie. God loves his children. He really does. Suddenly, the whole sky was filled with a dazzling light. Now everyone can come home to God, Jesus said. Death is not the end of you. 
You can live forever with your Father in heaven because I have rescued the whole world. And something amazing happened. Jesus rose up into the bright air higher and higher. They shaded their eyes and watched him go until a cloud hid Jesus so they couldn't see him anymore. They stood looking up into the sky like that for a long time. Suddenly, two shining men appeared. What are you doing? They asked. Jesus has gone up to heaven, but one day he'll come back for you. In the same way, you saw him leave from heaven and from the sky. Jesus' friends went back to Jerusalem with a strange gladness inside their hearts, and something Jesus had said stuck in their minds. Even though you won't be able to see me anymore, I will never leave you. No, not ever. I will be with you. Yes, always and forever. How can Jesus be with us and leave us at the same time, they wondered. They didn't understand, but soon they would. And that will be a story for another day. So Jesus went back to the Father. He went back to heaven, but before he went, he gave his disciples a very important and a special job. And we call this important and special job the Great Commission. Um, commission is like when you give somebody a job, you tell them to go do something. And so that was the Great Commission that he gave his disciples. I'm going to read it from my, from my real Bible, the way it says it in here. He says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So he says, Go and tell people the good news. Tell them all about me. Um, and that's a job that he gives us, too. He wants us to go and share the good news of Jesus and the good news of God's kingdom with people around us. And there's lots of different ways we can do that. We can tell them about Jesus and about his love. I think the best way to tell the good news is to tell about how Jesus has made an, a, a difference in our own lives. And so that's not just the news that happened back then in that story. That becomes breaking news. You know, when you're reading in the newspaper and it says breaking news because there's something new to tell everybody. Well, Jesus' news is good breaking news in our life every single day because every single day Jesus is working in our hearts and he's working in our lives. To, to show himself in a new way and to show us his love and to help us to show his love with other people. So Camden, do you want to show the handout that we have for this so week for people to work on? we have like the good news. It's like the late breaking news, but you're going to do something, a story about you, how Jesus, um, Jesus has helped you. Um, one way Jesus has helped me is get through school right now because it's really hard because I have to do school online. So it's hard not to see your teacher, but it's also hard like not to see your working person on a piece of table sitting in your own chair and at school. So that's what you're going to do. Um, the good news. That's great. So yeah, so Camden's example is a really good one. That's a way that God has been helping him every day in our house when things are hard he he feels confident and he feels good to keep on going and to to find god's blessings in it and so you can fill this out however you want draw a picture of a way that you've seen jesus's love write a story about jesus's love maybe in one part of it you could just tell about who jesus is and just practice writing that down so that you can share that story with other people um, maybe you could think about some ways that God has blessed you. That's a great way to share the good news of God is just to look around and go, what's great in my life right now? What are some ways that he's showing me he loves me with the blessings that are in, in my life? And you could put those in there. So design it however you want. This is your good news to share with people about God, about his love, about who Jesus is and how, how it's news in your life. It's your own story to tell. We all have our own story to tell about Jesus and about what he's done in our hearts. My story is not the same as Camden's story. Um, Camden's story is not the same as Anna's story. Everybody has a special story to share about Jesus. And so that's what that's for, for you to do that. Um, so I just encourage you guys this week to be, be looking around for God's sightings, to keep your eyes open to see where Jesus is showing you love or where he's giving you a chance to share his love and to do something kind for someone else. Um, so with that, we'll close out. Camden, do you want to close us in prayer today? Can you? I would be happy to. All right, let's pray, everybody. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you loved us enough to send Jesus down to earth. 
God, we thank you that he has given us this special job and that he's with us to help us to do this job. Lord, would you help us to share the good news of your love with everyone that we meet? We pray this in your son's holy and righteous name. Amen. All right, friends, we hope you have a great week. We can't wait to hear your good news stories. Um, and until then, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at the newspaper. All right, bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye.